Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is now my final video that I'll be uh, shooting of this trip. And it's actually a kind of a wind-up video because uh, I've only got another day or two here. And I'm out and off and back to Sydney uh, after three months or about 80 days, almost three months of being on the road. And um, I'm sitting right now in uh, Red Square, just or just near Red Square in Moscow, Russia. Uh, which is the capital and not long ago actually a couple of choppers helicopters probably with Vladimir Putin's men just flew into the Kremlin and the Kremlin's just over there so I'm gonna put up that video as well it was quite interesting not something you get to see every day um, so probably the main reason I actually did this video is because um, I want to wrap a few things up uh, mainly about traveling and budgets and um, how I was a well, main reason for why I travel how I'm able to use my money while, while I travel and, and basically the advice I can give to other people who want to go traveling, um, especially Australians because I, I understand Australians live so far away from the rest of the world, we sure. kind of have everything we need in our country and uh, not, not many people um, really want to get out of their comfort zone, especially coming to places like Russia where you need to pay a fucking lot of money for a visa and you need to um, really be able to get past some of the language barrier and bureaucracy that happens. It's not exactly the easiest of trips. So uh, first thing, um, I started in Lebanon, in Beirut. I actually flew from Sydney to Lebanon and um, spent a week there. Then I flew, took another plane from Turkey, from Lebanon to Turkey, to Istanbul, and traveled overland um, from Istanbul all the way up to Russia, apart from a ferry that I had to get from Estonia to Helsinki. But essentially, it was all overland. Um, and the other plane I got was from St. Petersburg to Kazan, but yeah, most of the time I never really caught planes. I, I pretty much went by train, by bus, um, and a ferry. So that actually saves a lot of money. It takes a lot more time, but it's all about the journey, not the destination. And you meet a lot of cool people when you're on the transit, um, transitioning from like a seven hour journey from, you know, um, Sofia to, um, the Black Sea. So it's, um... You know, it, it's really cool. Um, so, the first thing I wrote is, uh, this video kind of will just cover a few points. It's not going to be longer than 10 minutes. So, how did I budget and travel so many countries so effectively? So, I just explained I traveled overland, which cut a lot of costs from flights. Using the overland travels as downtime to kind of rest, to collect my thoughts, and to prepare myself for my next destination or journey. Um, also... It's important that when you travel, you have to really separate your needs from your wants. Um, a lot of people don't do that. They kind of just tend to go and eat at all the fancy restaurants. They book taxis unnecessarily when they don't have to. They can just get a public transport from uh, place to place, um, you know, with a patient. And uh, a lot of them actually also don't even understand the value of their own money compared to the money in the country they're in. For example, in Poland, I mean, one zloty can get you a long way, and one zloty is like 33 Australian cents. Uh, I paid like 15 zloty, or, or you know, actually less, 12 zloty for a full omelette for a really nice breakfast in um, in Poland, in Krakow, one of the most touristic cities. It was only four dollars, and you know, breakfast in Australia, you know, goes between 10 and 20 bucks, maybe even more, up to 30 dollars. So, I mean. Three zloty can really get you a long way, which is one dollar Australian. And yet, in, you know, one dollar for us is, is nothing. We tend to blow 50, 60, 100, 200, 300, so much in one night. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So really the first thing is when you do travel to um, countries where the salary is lower and, you know, the expenses are a whole lot less, especially, you know, I've been in India previously for three months and Eastern Europe which is still very civilized, very modernized. It's, I mean, your money can take you a long way if you know how to use it effectively, if you know, you know, to avoid tourist traps, to know um, where you're gonna buy your water bottle. You wouldn't buy it in the center where everyone is, you'd go and buy it in the convenience store. And to know what food you actually need to eat rather than eating and ordering food for the sake of ordering it. Um, so balancing your budget is the first thing, separating your needs from your wants. Um, and also, don't bring too many clothes. I mean, yeah, you might have seen my photos. I only packed a certain set of clothes. You don't want to be carrying with so much luggage. And at the end of my trip, so, I mean, in a day or two, I'm going to do 
clothes shopping here in Moscow to finish off my trip because I won't need to carry it around with me everywhere. Um, I'll just take it home back to Sydney and then I've got my new set of clothes ready. Um, okay, so that's the first thing, separating needs from wants. Um, is it better to travel alone or is it better to travel with a partner or a girlfriend or a best friend? So really that question all depends on who you're traveling with. So I traveled with one of my best friends uh, this, uh, this year for two months, eight weeks. And honestly, he helped change my life. He really was able to show me what I needed to do to improve myself, improve my character, um, become more successful, and uh, vice versa. I was able to help show him how to do a few things that he never understood, taught him how to be a bit more organized and use money and whatnot. But really, I mean, had I not traveled with him, I probably wouldn't have had so much development or so much growth in myself. Um, so really, if you're gonna travel with somebody, make sure the person you traveled with is open-minded and has something to offer you and something to teach you and you're willing to learn from them and they're willing to learn learn from you so it's a two-way street um, that way you'll you'll actually have a very um, fruitful traveling experience and if you're gonna travel with a um, partner like I traveled with my girlfriend once um, about a year and a half ago just when I first started traveling um, it, it can be the same you know I learned a lot from traveling with a, with a girlfriend and um, they learned a lot from me but uh, just remember when you are traveling with a significant other, you're going to have to go through all the hurdles of the emotions and, and you know, you know there always tends to be um, other, because you're in a proper intimate affectionate relationship, it's, it's, the dynamic's going to be different and you probably have a lot more obstacles to tackle, you know, and decision making to do with your partner. So I prefer, honestly, to travel alone. It, it, it does give me more freedom. The main reason I enjoy traveling alone is because um, I feel like I get to meet a whole lot more people that I wouldn't meet when I'm usually traveling with somebody else. And I also get to be able to work on myself and have time to myself to really clear my mind and uh, be able to reflect and self-evaluate about what I want in my life. So traveling alone helped me reach the inner journey experience. Okay, so um, uh, the other thing is, uh, just to finish off, is it really necessary for um, the human being or the individual to travel? Yes and no. Um, it depends on the reason you are traveling. I mean, a lot of people from Sydney and Melbourne travel for the wrong reason. They're, they're traveling to Ibiza, Mykonos, Santorini, and they're really beautiful places, but a lot of them take their money that they have in Sydney and do the same thing they're doing in Sydney at Stereo Sonic, at fucking, um, you know, uh, a state of trance or all these other music events and go and do them in, in Belgium at Tomorrowland or in or in Netherlands or in um, or in Greece in Mykonos and in, in Ibiza. I mean if you're traveling just to party or if you're just traveling to go to these things, I mean really you are missing out on the main reason people travel. You are bringing your magic bubble that what you do in Australia over into into you know another country and you're never really learning anything. Um, Okay, maybe some people are, and it's all well and good to have fun. I'm not against having fun. I mean, I've had a lot of fucking fun. But, I mean, there's a drastic difference why you should travel to, in comparison from traveling to party and traveling to actually grow as an individual and to look inside yourself and change things in your life. You don't want to be bringing your magic bubble over to, to Greece or to Croatia and then coming back and in Sydney, oh, I just went and party. I mean, okay, I did that too. So what? I didn't change the person, I didn't learn anything. You know, travel to really um, think about what you want to change in your life and reflect and understand um, that you, as an Australian, especially to the Australians, are very lucky to be living in the country you're living in. You know, I, I enjoy walking through the streets here to see what's happening. I enjoy looking at the reality of how people are living, looking at the faces of people, this type of thing. So, that's the other thing. Um, and, and the final thing is, you know, we're heading to about the 10th minute, is, um, okay, uh, what's the biggest lesson I learned uh, from traveling to all these countries? The biggest lesson I learned is that don't be a victim of circumstance. If something isn't working out for you in your own country because you can't get what you want, or there's parts of your own place where you live that isn't making you happy, or the environment you're in, or the people you're hanging around, Make a fucking effort to change it. Get rid of the people you don't need. 
because they're just going to bring you down. Change your environment. Um, you know, when I moved overseas about a, uh, a year and a half ago, I really got put out of my comfort zone and it was hard. You know, it was hard. But I, it changed me for who I was and it made me more appreciative of what I had. And um, by changing my, by understanding that I could put myself out of my current circumstances, I was able to reflect more upon myself and what I wanted. So um, don't blame the environment you're in. Because yes, there is a social conditioning and there is an environment that we all live in, but don't say, oh, well, I just have to live this way because I've been born here. Actually try and make an effort to get out and explore a few places and you might find what you want in some of these other countries. I really love Poland. I really love Russia. I love Greece, but that's biased. Um, you know, I, I just, I, there are things in those countries that I appreciate and enjoy more than I do in Australia. Australia is really good for work really good for um, having a good career but you know sometimes it's not all about work and money it's all about where you can find a place where you feel at peace so um, get out of your comfort zone travel for the right reasons and if you guys have any questions you want to ask me about my trip or whatnot feel free to write on this video um, and uh, all the best to all of you and thank you to everybody I met on this trip it's been a great amazing experience and I will obviously travel again. Uh, I don't know where to next. I love Eastern Europe. Anyway, talk soon. See ya.